Hi, Bill Hogg here, part of the SEND Institute Missiologist Council. Greetings to you from just outside of Vancouver, Canada. I've been asked to speak on city level kingdom collaboration in the near term. Now, there's a passage of scripture, a tiny vignette, found in the transition from Luke chapter 9 to Luke chapter 10 that speaks to the moment. Uh, we find ourselves in and the topic assigned to me. Luke chapter 9, Jesus commissions the 12 uh, to be agents of the kingdom. And in Luke chapter 10, there's widespread mobilization. There's a multiplication of the mission and ministry of Jesus as the anonymous faceless 72 followers are scattered to speak the words of Jesus, the kingdom of God is near, and to do the works of Jesus, to uh, demonstrate that the kingdom is near. So they're involved in this twin intertwined enterprise of declaring and demonstrating the message of the kingdom. And in Luke chapter 9, there's just two little verses which reveal that that motley crew, the original 12, who were squabbling internally about who was the greatest, also had a hard time looking out on the horizon and seeing other people invoke the name of Jesus. And they came across someone who was driving out demons in the name of Jesus, displacing the darkness in the name of Jesus, and they complained. And Jesus' response was, whoever is not against you, is for you. In other words, let this truth settle into your hearts. We're all on the same team. If we're aligned with Jesus, if we've embraced Jesus, if we name the name of Jesus, we're on the same team. And, and this is a lesson we need to absorb for this strange moment we're in. Brenda Salter McNeil says it's an Esther moment. Who knows about you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I would suggest it's an Isaiah 6 moment when we need a missional reset. And it's certainly a COVID-19 global pandemic moment. It's an I can't breathe moment. It's a strange moment where we see the open wounds of racism. We see protests. We see uh, police brutality. Uh, being spotlighted and we see uh, a divided culture and we need to be a unified team living out Jesus dream his John 17 23 dream that we're actually part of the same team and in this crazy moment that we're in we need to be agents of the hope of the gospel who embody the gospel of reconciliation and the words of Leslie Newbegin bounce around in my Scottish cranium that the only hermeneutic of the gospel is a congregation of men and women who believe the gospel and live by the gospel. And as leaders, we've got to embody that. So I've got four truths to share with you. For those of you who are alliteration aficionados, these four truths are, are four L's for such a time as this, where we've got to move from competition to a kingdom mindset. We've got to wake up afresh to the fact that Jesus is above all, he's the center, and we're on the same team. And if we want to see city level kingdom collaboration in the near term, where long-term planning seems to be a bit of a challenging enterprise, I want to propose firstly, that we live as beloved, and crucified leaders. The Apostle Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. And the life I now live in the flesh, or the life I now live in the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So there's two things to take away from the Apostle Paul's declaration and testimony. First of all, we're the beloved we're the beloved of the Father. 
we're dearly loved by Jesus. And if you and I embrace that as leaders, then the perfect love of God begins to cleanse us and free us from competition, fear, and envy, and puts us in a heart posture where you and I are more readily kingdom collaborators than people engaged in turf wars or empire building or the sad enterprise of competition. So first and foremost, I think we need to discover that we are beloved. That's your identity as a leader, as a pastor, as a church planter, as a network leader. You are the dearly loved, redeemed child of the Father, but also crucified. Tozer said, people who are crucified with Christ have three distinct marks. They are facing only one direction. They can never turn back and they no longer have plans of their own. So as a crucified leader who takes on board the crucified life, we no longer have plans of our own. And if we have no longer have plans of our own, it puts us in a posture where individually and together as a cohort of leaders in a zip code or a postal code, we can say, come kingdom of God, be done will of God, not my will, but your will, Father. And in this COVID moment, amongst other things that are going on, there's a selah, there's an enforced pause and the invisible hand that has put his index finger on the pause button is the Lord God and he invites us to rest and to reset and in this moment say not my plans not my will but your will secondly lift up leaders in your community so live as beloved and crucified but lift up leaders in your community I think this is a moment where we can pray for each other privately, but also publicly. We can praise, honor, and celebrate what others are doing in our community as they navigate this strange moment of civil unrest, of racial tension, and we still deal with the dynamics of a global pandemic. So lift each other up, create a culture of honor, where we speak well of each other, where we praise other leaders from our platforms and pulpits and through our social media, outlets and let the world know that we're on the same team and celebrate the good things that our others are doing and don't speak ill of each other in this moment people are navigating the near term in different ways and this is an opportunity to praise and celebrate rather than nitpick how they've negotiated the challenging moment that we're in thirdly learn from each other my friend dave coop who's the senior pastor of a great church in vancouver Coastal Church, uh, which lives by the axiom, making the city a better place. He was part of a leaders cohort where leaders from some of the churches in the downtown corridor of the city of Vancouver got together to learn from each other, to hear from each other and to discover learnings, best practices and how they were each dealing with this COVID-19 moment. Because it's certainly a moment where we can learn from each other. It's a time of unique personal challenge and leadership challenges. And congregations here in Canada have been navigating resource challenges. So it's an opportunity to learn from each other. And I would also say lean on each other. Trust each other. Pursue deep-spirited friendships. My friend John Davidson has said, this season we are in, as we move into phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four of life in a pandemic, is a moment of relaunch. Whether you're a church of six months, an infant church plant, or a church of 66 years, it's a moment to relaunch. And perhaps in this moment, we could be as iron sharpening iron, get alongside other leaders and say, what have you let go of? How has the Lord pruned you in this season? What are your biggest leadership discoveries? How are you going to pursue the mission of Jesus afresh in the near term? And fourthly, my fourth and final L is that we need to link arms for the sake of Jesus and his mission. So not only speak well of each other, not only pick up the phone or have yet another Zoom call or have an appropriate social distance coffee meeting, but actually 
prayerfully explore how we might link arms for the sake of Jesus and his mission in this moment, in the near term. Again, back to my friends at Coastal Church. Coastal Church has launched an Eden team, which is a downwardly mobile team of urban missionaries who've moved into a broken postal code uh, to bless and elevate the poor, to live in gospel community and, and share the gospel. And their geographical focus is the downtown east side of Vancouver, a place of deprivation, addiction, brokenness, despair, darkness. It's actually Canada's seventh poorest postal code. And near the convergence of human brokenness, there's a bright ray of hope a gathering spot, a launch pad into the community, the Eden Cafe. Now, in compliance with British Columbia's social restrictions, the cafe had to close. But under Dave and Cheryl Coop's leadership and Farry's leadership, Pastor Farry's leadership, who gives leadership to the Eden team in the Eden Cafe, they pivoted and gave out meals to Ronald McDonald House. They were involved in a food district program in partnership with the city and the city had said you know, they would be remunerated for that but then the city uh, retracted from that but coastal said hey people over profit they couldn't open the cafe but they used the cafe to partner with hallway house so that nutritious meals could be prepared and distributed to people in the single room occupancies and the downtown east side of Vancouver, and also to ensure that the most vulnerable and needy uh, wouldn't be bypassed. And I think there's a lesson there that we can link arms, we can share resources, and perhaps even together in this moment, prayerfully join heads and hearts to say, how might we take missional responsibility for a postal code, a zip code, an area of brokenness and lostness and despair and link arms to be agents of hope and show and share the love of Jesus together. Thank you for allowing me to share with you. God bless you. My name is Bill Hogg.